In this video, we're going to cover how the turn sequence in a game of Reality's Edge evolves. A standard game of Reality's Edge consists of eight turns. Each turn consists of four phases, initiative, activation, non-player character, and cleanup. At the beginning of each turn, both players will roll a 10-sided die with any specific scenario modifiers tacked onto the result. You will re-roll any ties. The high roll wins initiative and goes first. There is no rule to defer initiative to your opponent to make them go first. Initiative passes back and forth between the players depending on how their model's activation tests go. In the activation phase, the player with initiative will begin testing to activate their models. We mentioned this in a previous video. Each model uses their metal stat to test for activation. Remember, you are trying to beat the number 11. So the player with initiative nominates a model, conducts that model's activation test, and depending on what is rolled, three things can happen. First, on a failure, the model is issued one activation point, does some action, and then initiative passes to the other team. Second, on a success, the model gets issued two activation points, uses them, and the player can test the next model on their team. Third, the player rolls a critical success, gets three action points, uses them, and selects the next model on their team to conduct its activation test. This goes on back and forth until every model has been activated. Now, even if one team has activated all their models, the opposing player must still take activation tests, not to see if initiative passes, but to see how many activation points those models get. We have an example of how initiative can pass back and forth between two teams. Now, if a model is activated, it cannot just skip the activation. It has to do something. It can run in circles, drop, and then stand up, but they have to do something to expend their activation points. Something we will cover more in the combat and morale videos is when to register wounds and take morale tests. As you come into this game with preconceptions from other games, you can misinterpret some of these rules. But essentially, wounds are not calculated until initiative passes. So while you hold initiative and can shoot someone, you know you have hit them, but it's not until initiative passes that you find out if that hit gets turned into a wound or a graze, if it forces morale checks, or takes a model out of action. So this can really impact how you assign actions. An exception to this is virtual beings on a team. They do not roll dice for the activation test to determine how many AP they get. They always get two. However, they still need to roll dice to see if activation passes. This also means they do not get the chance to score a critical and get three activation points. We have divided the types of actions that a model can take into three categories delineated by their costs and actions. Zero action points, one action points, and two action points. Many of them are self-explanatory, especially if you are used to playing skirmish games. We won't get into activations in this video as we have broken them down into four types, each of which will get their own videos. So we will have one for movement, combat, Hiding and Overwatch. Hiding and Overwatch are short segments in the book, but they can be tricky and require a careful reading and understanding to execute them. Remember, preconceptions of how other games work do not carry over to Reality's Edge. I have not included apps or applications to use the full terms, which are the hacking actions that a model can take as they will get their own video and there are a lot of applications. The third phase is the non-player character phase, which will get in its own video as it is a very involved phase if the scenario you're playing in fact has them. Not all scenarios have non-player characters in them. But these non-player characters can range from corporate security officers that pass for the law, feral animals, innocent bystanders, soccer hooligans, my favorite, the drunken bystander, security guards and defense terrorists, terrorists, and news teams, to name a few. This is probably the most interesting thing about Reality's Edge, because your gang has to complete its mission, while the rest of the world goes about its day, and that world can get in the way, and doesn't care about them. The final phase is the aptly named Cleanup Phase. There is not a complete section on this phase in the rulebook. Just one sentence on page 29 that says, Resolve any end-of-turn effects, and change any statuses that expire. Now that we understand the turn sequence, we'll go into part 4, 
where we talk about the different move actions.